In hindsight, it was destined to end in disaster. Sarah Jurazza was young, beautiful and full of life. But one night a month ago, she was upset after an argument. Sarah got behind the wheel and then she made a phone call. She was distracted, distressed and in a split second, out of control. When Sarah careered off the road and slammed into a tree, she was on the phone to her mother. Fiona Jurazza will forever be haunted by the sound of her daughter's final terrible moments. Tonight, the Jurazza family is speaking out in the hope Sarah's death will force change. This is where Paul and Fiona Jurazza must now visit their eldest daughter. just continue looking at me. The family's shock and pain is still raw. Just a month ago, 26-year-old Sarah seemed unstoppable, beautiful, vibrant and full of life. We've lost a precious part of our life that is now gone forever. All we've got left to hang on to is the memories. To lose a child in a road accident is always a tragedy. But few parents will ever know the anguish of Fiona Jurazza, who heard those terrible final moments of her daughter's life. And I just, um, I just kept saying, I love you, Sarah, I love you, we're coming. Hang in there, we're coming. From the time she was a child growing up on Sydney's northern beaches, Sarah was always a people person. A part-time model and beautician, she had a huge circle of friends. Always stood out of a crowd, um, made sure that she made an entrance there anywhere she went, um, happy, loving, family orientated, um, and that's what I'll take in my heart forever with Sarah. I class it like a bo an expensive bottle of champagne, full of bubbles. She, she was just a very nice, friendly, lovable person. But when Sarah arrived home at 6.30 on the night of August 26th, she wasn't her usual bubbly self. As a mother, as my natural instincts, I knew she deep down was obviously hurt or upset. So as a mum, you had this instinct that something wasn't quite right. Because that's what mothers do. Sarah had been upset by an argument earlier in the afternoon and Fiona tried to talk her out of going out for dinner. And I looked in her beautiful brown eyes and I just said, um, Sarah, look, I'll take you. Let me drive you. I said, look, you know, it gives us time to chat. He goes, no, mum, no, look, I'm fine. I just, I just do need to go out. I'll be fine. But Fiona was still worried about her daughter driving while so upset. When Sarah's boyfriend Scott dropped by a few minutes later, they decided to follow the route she'd taken to the city to make sure she'd arrived safely. So we got to the end of the street and um, the phone flashed and it was her name Sarah on the iPhone and um, Scott put it on loudspeaker. Sarah was on an unlit section of the Wakehurst Parkway at Narrabeen in Sydney. At the point she made her call, the road curves to the left. It was a curve Sarah didn't see until it was too late. You know, what, what we heard was some... Um, Sarah's voice saying, oh shit, and um, noises whooshing through the sounds of the phone and the car radio playing and um, breathing, heavy breathing and a gasp for air. And then it was just the noise, I don't know if it was the bushes or the car or the whooshing noise, I'll never forget the whooshing noise going through the phone. And I just, um, I just kept saying, I love you, Sarah, I love you, we're coming. Hang in there, we're coming.
In those few distracted seconds, instead of veering left, Sarah's car ploughed straight ahead. It crossed the centre line and careered off the opposite side of the road, where it hit an embankment, rolled once and slammed into a tree. Her mum had heard the moment of impact over the phone. And now travelling the same route, she was the first person to come upon the crash site. We still had her phone the whole time. We just kept hearing these noises and there was not much more coming from Sarah, but there was this incredible glow in the bush and it was the headlights of the car and, <laughs> and I jumped out of the car and I ran towards the car and, and my leg sort of gave way and it was like she didn't want me to find her or get any closer and I just collapsed. <laughs> And then Scott came back to me and said, um, I've taken a pulse, but I'm sorry. And I just, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I just said, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fiona called her husband, Paul, but she was so distraught, she couldn't bring herself to tell him Sarah was dead. When I arrived, the police did try and stop me, but I, I said, look, that's my daughter, you're not stopping me. I said, no way. So I walked up and I looked in the car, she looked beautiful, her hair was nice, she had a seatbelt on. To me, she just looked like she was pinned in the car. It looked like her eyes were open. But then I'm sort of rubbing her shoulder saying, sweetheart, are you all right? You know, don't worry. And, and a fiery tapped me on the shoulder and said, mate, you know she's deceased, don't you? And that's, my heart just fell out. My heart, I just crumbled then. Paul stayed by Sarah's side for the next seven hours until crash investigators could remove her body from the crumpled wreck. It was the hardest seven hours of my life. And I still today can't believe she's not here. I pinch myself every day. You just think, what a waste. It is. It, it, you know, we feel we've been robbed. Yeah. Um, my poor wife has to relive that moment in her head over and over again. And no family wants to be in that position. It's amazing when you drive along how many cars you look into and you see them get on the phone, doing their text, looking away and just crazy. In New South Wales, Assistant Commissioner John Hartley is the man responsible for enforcing tough new penalties for mobile phone use while driving. But the message is falling on deaf ears. In a recent one-day blitz, 800 people were booked across the state. You know, and the toddler runs out and you don't see them and you can't stop in time, so... And that's some guilt to live with. Oh, look, yeah. For a mobile phone call. It's bad enough for the, the person who's um, uh, been the driver, but obviously the family suffer forever. And that's what people don't realise, that there is no coming back from a, a fatality. It's, it's a family suffering forever and they'll never get over, never get over it. This is Sarah's room, her treasured room. This is her dog, Coco? This is her gorgeous dog that she absolutely loved, and this is her baby. Mm. This, this is her baby. And she's feeling it at the moment. She's pretty sad. She comes in here every day and looks in the mirror, searching for our beautiful girl, Sarah. Ironically, for Fiona, some of the most treasured memories of Sarah are those she sent via her mobile phone. Hey, Mum, it's only me. Um, just finishing up at the meeting, having another drink. Um, sorry, Mr. Cole, it's probably a little bit late in Sydney. Um, give me a call back when you're ready. Love you. Love you. That was her little thing that she'd always finish off with any voicemails. Mummy, I love you. For Mum to have to literally hear her daughter run into a tree, to have to hear the screeching of a tyre and then a a final bang, that would have been the worst thing for mum to ever, like, I could not imagine what mum's going through. 
For Sarah's brothers, Rob and Pete, and her little sister, Laura, the circumstances of the crash make the pain that much harder to bear. My mum just came through the door saying, she's gone. My beautiful daughter, she's gone. And she just kept repeating that and repeating it. But I've never seen my mother like that, ever. There's not one person that hasn't touched their phone while driving. People can deny it, but everyone has. Everyone's looked at the time or looked at their, you know, messages. And like me, myself, I do it. I'm, I'm not gonna lie and say I don't, because I do. And like, but seeing what has happened to my sister, I don't want to touch it. You know, I, I just put it down, that's what I do. Sarah made a fatal mistake, but she was no different to millions of Australians whose mobile phones rule their busy lives. I see it all the time, Carl. I mean, I'm, I'm a landscaper. I, I've got a truck, I drive, and the amount of people that are texting, um, talking on the phone is unbelievable. Every second car I would see someone on the phone. Yeah. But the, unfortunately, the technology today has made us has made us so dependent on the telephone. It, it seems it rings and we want to answer it because that's what we've got to do. Paul and Fiona can only hope that the senselessness of Sarah's death will help send a powerful message. What would you say to people? It's just within seconds or minutes, it's all it takes for anyone to just lose their precious child or children um, I, or any loved ones. And honestly, everyone's got to wake up. I would just say to parents, to kids, you know, you give your daughter or your son or your husband or your wife a cuddle, give them a kiss, tell them you love them. Love hearts, I love you. Cheers. Cheers for my mummy. <laughs> Love hearts. Enjoy kisses soon. Is it comforting for you to it have is her saying that? It is comforting. Yeah. Just reminds me of how sweet and beautiful and and how much I'm gonna miss about her. But I'm hoping that my daughter's death is not in vain, Carl. I really do. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.